What's up guys? Welcome back. Today, I wanna to talk about delivery methods. When you're buying those tickets and you're about to check out, you always have a bunch of different options, so I wanna go over them and tell you what they're all about. Let's get into it. So you just found some great seats, congratulations, time to check out. First thing that's gonna happen though, is once you get there, you're gonna to have to decide on how you're gonna get those tickets delivered to you. So let's go over the five main options. Hard stock tickets, PDF slash e-tickets, mobile tickets, paperless tickets, and will call. Let's dive into it. Starting off with the most common thing when you think of tickets, hard stock. So hard stock, basically, you know, piece of card stock paper, uh, print it out. Sometimes there's commemorative uh, details on them. Uh, other times it just says, you know, the basic information for the event. Um, regardless, as long as it has a barcode on it, you're good to go. Generally, these tickets are sent out well in advance of the event actually happening. Uh, and then you can go ahead and distribute them to your friends if you're going with anybody. Uh, and then it's also very easy to sell these if that is something that you decide to do. There may be a small fee to get a hard stock ticket these days um, because they're moving towards more electronic based options. Number two, number two, PDF e-tickets. So e-tickets, these were kind of the most common ones I would say, you know, maybe just five, six years ago even. Um, they were very common, very easy to get. Once you buy your tickets, it's basically just a PDF download of the ticket itself. Uh, very easy to download, very easy to distribute to your friends, send them off, sell them, move them, however you want to do with them. Uh, it's very, very easy to, uh, to use them. One of the potential drawbacks of a PDF ticket is not necessarily if you're buying it from the primary market, but it was when people were buying them off, you know, Kijiji and Craigslist. Uh, there was always a risk associated with it because you never knew if that was the original ticket itself. If you buy a PDF ticket from Ticketmaster, there's no requirement for you to only download it once. Uh, and so with that, what can happen is you'll download it, print it off 500 times, and then you sell it to 500 people. Is that right? Definitely not. Is that fraud? Definitely yes. However, most people, for the most part, are good people and if they're gonna sell their tickets or give them to someone else, they're only gonna give them the one copy and they're expecting them to you know, just use that one copy and not have to deal with the issue of someone trying to print off millions of copies. The high level of fraud with it, it in itself was not very high. If it was bought through the box office or through one of the larger you know, secondary websites uh, because of all their you know, fan guarantees and things like that, but basically, it was easy to blame a lot of fraud based on the ability for those tickets to be transferred and kind of resold many, many times over. Uh, so there was definitely some negative connotation around them. And that's kind of where we're leading into the next type of ticket, which is mobile tickets. So mobile tickets are definitely the standard right now. The way they work is pretty simple. You can't actually print anything out or hold anything physical um, because it's gonna be on your phone or on your iWatch or whatever the case may be. Basically some kind of mobile device. Uh, what's gonna happen is you open up the app it's gonna have a barcode on it and then basically that's just what you're gonna scan in to get into the venue with mobile tickets there are a lot of you know current issues with them uh, in the sense that uh, because they're electronic they can be more easily controlled by the primary market or the box office itself uh, and so what happens is sometimes if you're buying a ticket from Ticketmaster and it's a mobile ticket Sometimes what they'll do is they'll actually turn off the transfer feature so that if you want to send them to your friends, you actually have to wait until, you know, 48 hours or 24 hours before the show actually starts where you can actually send them off. Sometimes there'll even be a little disclosure that says this ticket cannot be transferred or resold. And when that happens, if you want your friends to go with you, you all have to enter together. It's not something where you can kind of give, everyone has their own ticket on their own phone. It's one phone and everyone just kind of lines up and you go one, 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 one. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, all of this is just to help and prevent kind of resale these tickets and it's also to help reduce fraud because if you have a ticket tied to your account um, if you want to send it to anyone else you no longer have it in your possession and so it's only you know there's only one unique version of that ticket that exists it is relatively easy to sell a mobile ticket uh, sometimes people will just take screenshots of them other times they'll actually go through the transfer feature and send them off to whoever's buying them also with mobile tickets there's actually another version specifically with Ticketmaster and I'm sure others are also planning on releasing their own if they haven't already is what uh, basically includes a rotating barcode. Um, so with Ticketmaster, they call these safe ticks. Uh, reason behind that is that you can't actually take a screenshot of these tickets because the barcode rotates every you know couple of seconds. Uh, so it's always gonna have a unique barcode so that if you do try and you know take a screenshot of it and send it off to someone else, they won't be able to use it because it's not official, it's not an official ticket. One of the reasons they brought this in is kind of, again, to prevent fraud, um, which is what they say anyway, but then also it's really to control where the, who uses that ticket. 
Basically, they'll have all the customer information because the only way you can use a safe ticks ticket is through the Ticketmaster app. And unfortunately, there's a lot of issues that can arise from this. So what happened with the Black Keys, they used safe ticks and they didn't tell anyone that they couldn't transfer the tickets and then people still sold them. And then basically what happened in the end is that when people were trying to get to the venue, they, they couldn't get in because their tickets didn't work. And then you had you know hundreds of people all stuck outside, just waiting, 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 hoping their tickets gonna work. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. It was really bad actually how they kind of did it. And it was all just, you know, everything was last minute and people weren't sure what was gonna work, what wasn't gonna work. There was a lot of confusion from both, you know, the primary marketplace, the secondary marketplace, you know, buyers. Everyone was just having a really hard time using it. I've linked the article below, so you can go ahead and take a look at that. It, it was a really interesting case. Um, with that, they are now, you know, using that as kind of like a baseline of how they want to implement this safe ticks program. Uh, and again, another article I'll put down is um, with Taylor Swift. So she's actually going through this safe ticks pro format as well. Um, and, but then with her, it specifically said that all these tickets will be transferable. So um, people will be able to actually, you know, get these tickets to their friends and family, or if they want to sell them, they'll be able to do that as well. All right, so now we're moving into the kind of the last couple. So uh, number four is going to be will call. So will call tickets themselves are no different than a hard stock ticket. What it just means is that you have to go pick up the ticket from the box office. Sometimes you'll be able to pick it up, you know, a couple days before, or a week before, any time before the event. Other times what they'll do is they'll actually force you to go pick it up within, you know, one and a half hours, two hours, uh, within the kind of that short time frame before the event actually starts to get your ticket. Reason behind this is again, it's to reduce, you know, the ability to resell these tickets because if you can only pick it up, you know, at the event itself, uh, generally speaking, there's not enough time to be able to get that ticket out to another buyer and, you know, make that whole transaction happen. With will call tickets as well, purchaser has to be the one who picks up the tickets and they'll have to bring you know, their ID or credit card, which they use to purchase it. Uh, just to read the terms and conditions as every event and venue is a, is a little bit different. Depending on when they release the tickets from the box office for will call, if it's, you know, say it's an hour and a half before the event starts, the person who bought tickets can go down, pick them all up, and then, you know, distribute the tickets, walk in together, however they want to do it. Um, but other times they might actually require you to get in line all together, walk in, you know, get your wristband and then walk in directly into the show. Um, with will call tickets, you'll find that these are for the most part um, reserved for, you know, prime, you know, platinum type seating, VIP seating, or general admission type seating, depending on the event and venue. But then there are also times where you can select the will call option uh, for just, you know, regular tickets that are trying to all over the upper bowl or bowl, wherever the case may be. And then number five is basically what they call paperless tickets. So there's two methods with this one. So one is with flash sheets specifically. Flash seats are basically tickets that are tied to, you know, a photo ID or a credit card. Um, what you do is basically swipe that card when you get to the, the venue and what they'll do is they'll issue you out um, kind of a ticket slip and that'll be your ticket per se. Uh, you don't get an actual physical ticket handed to you. You're basically just using you know, your own ID, which you would be carrying at all times anyway, uh, to be able to get into the venue. So the, again, the reason behind this is one, it helps reduce fraud because obviously no one else has your driver's license except for you. Um, so that obviously makes it a lot easier to you know make sure you never lose your ticket. Um, but then the flip side is if you can't attend the event, um, you're not going to just get hand off your driver's license to somebody else. You have to make sure that you can transfer your tickets. So um, it's all kind of controlled within the Flash Seats app and, you know, through the Flash Seats um, ecosystem. Uh, so a lot of the events, yes, you can go ahead and transfer them off. Sometimes they'll be able to issue them to you as mobile tickets, you know, with QR codes or whatever. Um, other times they might be able to give you hard stock tickets. But if you're going to use the Flash Seat capabilities themselves, uh, a lot of times that just means you actually have to have your, your own ID, which is, you know, tied to you. On the flip side with paperless tickets, sometimes outside of flash seats, you know, with Ticketmaster or some other venues, uh, you, you swipe your credit card or it might even be, you might have a season seat holder card. So like, for example, with the Toronto Blue Jays, what they have is they have these specific um, RFID cards that you just, you know, tap when you get to the venue. And what it does, it prints out a ticket slip saying, you know, here's where you're sitting and you don't even need to have any physical tickets. It's really just all on the card. So yeah, that's basically all the different options that exist for you. Um, there are obviously, um, when you go through secondary markets, there are a few other options, what they'll usually term as special delivery. Uh, and within that, those will, you know, encompass, you know, um, walk-ins or local pickup or gift card delivery. Um, and these are all kind of very special circumstance type items. I won't go into it today just because it is a bit 
more advanced than what the traditional methods are uh, and you won't generally see these unless you're buying them on a resale site so for now i think we've kind of covered everything that's going to happen when you're going to buy tickets from the primary market hope you guys learned a lot today if you have any questions definitely leave them in the comments below i'll be sure to get back to you otherwise i'll have another video for you guys next tuesday if you haven't subscribed yet definitely do so be sure to hit that little bell because i want to make sure that you stay tuned for all the new ticket items that i'll be discussing and i'll see you guys next time